Julie, are you awake yet? What the hell are you doing right now? Sleeping? Such a stupid couch potato. Wake up, I have something to talk to you about. Oh, hi mom. I'm sorry I didn't hear you call. Yesterday I worked all night. So I couldn't even open my eyes this early. Yeah, yeah. You're being lazy all the time. We all know that. By the way, what's the matter? Is there something urgent? It's only 6 a.m. What makes you call me this early? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Give me $500. Quickly. What? $500? Are you really serious? But you need $500 for what? Why are you asking me that? Ah, you don't want me to get in touch with your precious money, right? How dare you speak to your mother-in-law that way? I don't mean it, Mom. It's just that money doesn't grow on trees, you know? Especially, it's a really huge amount of money. I can't just throw it all out the windows. What? So now you're thinking that I'm wasting your money? You're so selfish. All I want is some cash so that I can buy some groceries for the family. And you're telling me that I'm wasting your money? Are you really my daughter-in-law? Are you sure that you're only buying some groceries? Please tell me the truth. Are you planning to spend it on your clothes and jewelry again? Well, yes. So what? Is that a problem? Mom, please calm down. I never said that you're wasting my money. I just want to understand the situation better. You know how important it is for us to manage our finances wisely, especially with our current circumstances. And you've already had a lot of clothes in the closet. Buying new ones could be really expensive and wasteful also. I think you should consider wearing all of them before buying brand new clothes. This will be much more economical for our family as a whole, don't you think? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Now my daughter-in-law is telling me to wear my old stupid clothes every day. Tell me. Who am I to you? I am responsible for the well-being of this whole family. I work tirelessly every day to satisfy everyone in this house. I take care of you all. Don't I deserve something for myself? Is it too much to ask for a little extra so that I can buy myself something nice once in a while? I sacrifice so much and it feels like my efforts go unnoticed. Mom, I appreciate everything you do for the family. I truly do, but it's essential to find a balance between taking care of others and taking care of yourself. I understand that you want to treat yourself, but we need to consider our financial situation. I am not a billionaire, and I also have bills to pay and hundreds of other future plans. So I need to consider thoroughly before spending money on anything. Okay, so now you're the important person here, right? You work day in and day out until midnight and make money, but it does not give you the right to insult my spending habits like that. From the first time at the house, just use your brain and think for once. Who takes care of you? Me. Who makes your dinner? Me. And who goes to the grocery store? It's still me, isn't it? Mark this one more thing. I'm your mother-in-law. The one who allowed you to set food in this house. I just expect you to treat me and this family well. But after all, this is how you repay me? It's just disappointing. Mom, you're misunderstanding me. I appreciate all the support you've given me. And I'm grateful for everything you do. So I always give you the money you need to pay for all the bills and expenses in this house. Is that not enough? Anyway, fine, okay. I'll give you money this time. But please... Don't try to squander all of it, okay? Ah, that's nice of you. Okay, thank you so much, my precious daughter. And of course, don't worry, I'll spend it wisely. Oh, and I heard that you are now having a sweet big apartment in the city center, aren't you? I mean, it's a fortune. Why don't you tell me and your husband about it? Oh, yeah, well actually, I just bought it a couple of weeks ago. It's not really settled yet. So I just plan to tell you after I finish with installing all the necessary furniture. But I just want to reserve it for my own use, Mom. I think that it would be okay if I use it for renting and stuff. Oh my. Don't you think that would be a waste itself? Why don't you think of letting my family live there with you? This would be really wonderful. 
Mom, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I'd just prefer using it for renting and maybe other business. You know, money makes money. Renting it out would provide me with additional income, which could be beneficial for our financial stability. But Julie, just think about how convenient it would be for all of us to live together. We could live a much better life in that apartment, Julie. This house is, ah, uh, terrible for such a woman like me to live. And what a pity when our neighbor or Neil's friends come. It'll be such a shame on this family. I am your mother-in-law, right? Don't you think that I deserve to live in such a wonderful place? And Julie, think of your husband. He has to work every day and then comes home with this narrow, stupid shelter. Poor him. But mom, we have been living in this house for like a really long time and nothing happens. Life just goes on wherever you live. Moreover, I don't have any intention to move you in. So yeah, sorry mom. It's just impossible to do that. What? How selfish are you? You just think of yourself. You think that you have more money than us so you can look down on your husband's family? Mom, you're being unreasonable. I'm tired of these nonsense conversations with you. Sorry, but pardon me. I have to go pack things now. I'm having a business trip with my company next week and I can't prepare things in just one night. Are you neglecting me, Julie? Julie! <sighs> Such a stubborn and egotistical daughter-in-law. Hi, Julie. Are you home yet? Oh, hi, darling. Well, I'm still at my work right now. I'm trying to finish these very important reports for my meeting tomorrow. What's happening, Neil? Well, my car broke down, so give me $800 right now. Wait, what? What are you saying? Right now? Yes, hurry up, or else I'll never make it to come home on time for dinner. But where's your money? Didn't you bring any with you? Yes, I did, but I spent all of them. It's just too little for me to cover my daily expenses. Holy crap! How could you spend that amount of money in just one day? What did you spend it on? It's not that big a deal. In my company, we have to go out and eat a lot. So it's just normal that this money is never enough. Normal? Really? I don't know anyone else who spends their entire paycheck in a single day. What on earth did you spend it all on? Geez, can't you understand? We have to wine and dine clients, and that costs money. It's part of my job. Oh, of course. It's always an excuse. So you think it's acceptable to drain our bank account? Just to impress people at work? Ridiculous! It's not about impressing people. It's about maintaining business relationships. You wouldn't understand. Oh, I wouldn't understand. I guess being financially responsible and planning for the future is just beyond me, right? Look, I didn't expect you to understand. You're always so focused on your money and never bother to care for this family. I never bother to care for this family? I use my money to cover monthly bills, pay for thousands of other expenses, and save for our future. But I guess that's not important to you, right Neil? Don't be so dramatic. It's just one day's worth of expenses. We'll survive. It's not just about one day, Neil. It's about your overall spending habits and lack of responsibility. We need to have a serious talk about our finances. Enough! There's nothing to talk about. You have two choices. One, give me the money. Two, my mother will know all about this and your life is doomed. Ugh, you just can't stop making me irritated. Fine, I have sent $800 to your account. Check it. And don't ever cause trouble anymore. What? So now you're angry with your husband? Who gave you the right to do that? Don't you think that it's very rude to complain about your husband like that? Ugh. Talking with you just wasted my precious time. I gotta go now, I have some packing stuff to do. So please excuse me to hang up the conversation. Wait, hold your horses, what? You're moving out of our house? Oh, I guess it. You're moving to your new apartment, aren't you? <laughs> well, you're such a crooked wife. Are you planning to get away from this house and then make all the money yours? I didn't know that you could become such an astute woman earth are you talking about? I'm not moving out of the house. 
I'm preparing for my business trip with the company. You're being so ridiculous right now. Oh, so now you're a businesswoman, huh? Going on fancy trips and leaving your family behind? I see how it is. You're probably planning to have secret meetings with your business partners, right? I know it. That's why you always come home late. And you told me that it was due to your busy work? <laughs> Are you thinking that I'm that naive? Neil, seriously. You need to stop jumping to conclusions and making baseless accusations. This business trip is a professional obligation and has nothing to do with any ulterior motives. It's about representing the company and expanding our professional network. And I'm not secretly dating anyone. It's just your stupid imagination. Oh, I'm sure it's all very professional, isn't it? I bet you have some secret agenda to advance your career and have fun while forgetting your husband's family here. Just how wonderful that scheme is. Neil, this is getting ridiculous. You're completely overreacting and assuming the worst without any evidence. I have always been transparent with you about my work, and this trip is no different. It's not about leaving you or making money behind your back. Well, forgive me for not trusting you blindly. You've always been so secretive about your work, and now suddenly you're off on some business trip? It's hard not to be suspicious. I can't believe you're being this paranoid. If you had any trust in our relationship, you would know that I am not the kind of person you're thinking of right now. This trip is approved by the company, and I have nothing to hide. Actually, it's you who's acting weird. It's impossible that you can spend that huge of amount of money in just one day. This has happened lots of times before, and I even noticed that you are out more often these days, even on the weekends. What are you actually planning these days? Julie, you're overthinking. Are you really doubting your husband? One more word, and I'll kick you out of this house right away. What? Are you threatening to kick me out? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but it'll happen if you don't mind your attitudes. Got it? Hi, Julie. Are you still on your business trip? Do you have fun there? Hi, Mom. I've just finished my very important meeting with my boss and the company. And thank you for asking. Even though the work is quite hard and challenging here in the journey, you know, I'm handling it just fine. Don't thank me so soon. I'm not asking because I'm caring, Julie. I'm just calling to say that we've moved into your beautiful apartment. <laughs> wow. I have to say that it's such a large and glamorous place. You should have told us all in advance. I can't believe that you could be that selfish. Anyway... We're enjoying ourselves a lot here. What on earth are you talking about? You moved into my apartment? You just moved in without my permission? So what? It's not like you're using it. You're always at work and you never come home. So of course, it would be better if you used it instead. But that's my apartment. I spent a lot of money on buying it. I told you before, but you don't remember, do you? Well... It's not of my business. I just think that such a wonderful place like this should not be wasted. So we just decided to stay here for, like, ever. <laughs> Ugh, that's just ridiculous. But how could you know the address of my apartment? How did you two have the keys? And on top of that, who's living in my apartment with you? Ah, calm down, my little sweetie. You should not be angry with your mother-in-law. That's not a good attitude, honey. I'm with my son, of course. Who else could it be? About the address? Well, you didn't tell us the true address of the apartment, so we have to find it on our own. Therefore, Neil followed you to the apartment a lot of the time. Later on, he took some photos of it, and then he brought them to my place. It's such a good start to the plan, don't you think, honey? Considering the keys, maybe you didn't notice, but we stole them. Neil saw you use them to get in the house, so he could remember distinctly their features and patterns. And the night before you went on business, he secretly took the keys from the purse. Well, it's easy to proceed with your plan because they're just so naive and gullible. But it's trespassing. I'm your daughter-in-law, yes, but this apartment is still my property. So it's not right for you to stay in my house without my consent. I'm not going to let you stay here. Oh... 
please. Don't be such a drama queen. We're not going to hurt anything. We've just moved in. Can you just please use your brain once? Using my brain? I'm well aware of my rights as the owner of this property. Just because you're my mother-in-law doesn't give you the right to invade my home without permission. And just because you've moved in doesn't make it legal or acceptable. Your property. You seem to forget that we've been part of this family for years. We've always supported you. And now that we need a place to stay temporarily, you're throwing this tantrum? It's disappointing. Supporting me doesn't give you the right to overstep boundaries. This is my personal space, and I have the right to decide who stays here. It's not about throwing a tantrum. It's about asserting my rights as a property owner. Well... Maybe you should have thought about that before leaving the apartment empty while you're away on your business trip. It's not like you're using it. We're just trying to make use of this space temporarily and you're making it a big deal. Just because I'm away doesn't mean you can take advantage of my absence and occupy my property. It's not up to you to decide what to do with my apartment. Respect for personal boundaries and property rights is essential in any relationship, family or otherwise. Respect? Do you want respect? Maybe you should start by respecting your elders. You're my daughter-in-law, and that means you should show some respect and gratitude for everything we've done for you. I have always respected and appreciated your role as my mother-in-law, but that doesn't mean you can disregard my rights as a property owner. Well, you can't do anything about it while you're on your business trip, so for now, we're staying here. Deal with it. Oh, one more thing. You're not here when we came in, so it's true that you won't be able to live here anymore. We are the ones who packed all the stuff and arranged the furniture and you did nothing. This house is large, but with three people, I don't think so. But there is still one choice though. How about you find another apartment and live on your own? Whereas we'll stay here and take care of this house, dear? What? Are you really kicking me out of my house? You have no right to do that. Yes, I do. This house is mine now, so don't ever come in. I don't need you. The true owners of this house are my son and I. That would be just enough. You're too lazy to care for the family, so it would be better if you just keep doing your own job and find somewhere else to live. Fine. If you are so confident about yourself like that, then so be it. Just continue with your stupid plan to steal my house. But I'll try my best to take back what's mine. You'll have to pay for this. <laughs> Go on. Like I care. Hey, Julie. Answer my call right now. Ugh, I can't believe that you would do this to your family. Now you have to explain everything to me right now. Julie, answer me immediately. I order you. What? Mom? Are you still keeping your usual habit to wake me up this early? But things are different now. Don't expect that I'll give you any money, because I won't do that anymore. You bastard! What did you do to the house? A lot of people are coming here and throwing away all of our stuff. I thought it's your house now, isn't it? You should know what's happening with your house. Why do you bother to call me? I'm not kidding. You must have done something with the house. Tell me, what's it? <laughs> Seeing you being worried is such a sweet feeling. Okay, just calm down. I'll explain everything. So we came home yesterday to sell the house. Because it's been sold now, it's not your house anymore. The new owners are moving in, so you'd better pack things and move out soon. What the heck are you talking about? You can't just sell the house without consulting me. This is my home. Oh, come on, Mom. You know very well that you never legally own this house. It has always been in my name, and I have every right to sell it. I've been more than generous letting you stay here for so long. Generous? After all these years, you're just throwing me out like this? What am I supposed to do now? You've had plenty of time to figure out your living situation. I've given you enough support, and it's time for you to stand on your own feet. Besides, you should have expected this. 
I've warned you this day would come. It's you who are too proud of yourself. This is outrageous. I can't believe you would do this to me, your own mother-in-law. And I didn't have enough time to find a new place. I don't have any money left now. We sold the old house and spent it all on buying a new car for Neil. Then I told him to quit his job because I thought that we could count on you to live a better life. Oh, about that. I prepared my divorce petition yesterday and I'm going to give it to Neil. I think it would be better if we had no connection with each other anymore. What? No way. You could not do that to your husband. He has done nothing wrong. Nothing? <laughs> you know what? He cheated on me. I will never forgive him for that. Wait, what? This can't happen. Oh, but it is happening right now. I was suspicious of him cheating a long time ago. So one day, I just secretly checked the transferring history on his bank account and found out that he had been transferring a huge amount of money to a strange account number every day. Then, I realized that it's the bank account of his mistress. No wonder why he just squandered his money like that. I have collected all of the evidence on his phone recently and enclosed them with my divorce petition. Well, I think I would have to thank him due to the alimony I could receive when we get divorced. This would be like, huge! <laughs> no, you couldn't do that to us. We have nothing to lose right now. But you still have the car, right? Yes, but recently we have realized that it's not a new car. We were tricked into buying an old and broken car. They just designed it so it could look like new. But when we brought it home, it got broken and couldn't even function anymore. Oh, how unfortunate for you. It seems like everything is falling apart for you, doesn't it? First you lost the house, and now a broken car? My, my, what a comedy of errors. Don't be so happy like that, Julie. Are you really a human being? Why could you be so heartless with your mother-in-law? Julie... I know you still feel some compassion for us inside your heart, right? Well, not at all. Just look at what you did to me. You entered my house without my permission, and you even kicked me out. Anyway, I don't really need that house anymore, because I have found for myself a much better apartment where you could never find it. And don't you ever talk about compassion to me. It's disgusting. But finally, it looks like karma has caught up with you, doesn't it? Maybe you should have been more careful and done your research before making such a big purchase. If you knew how to spend things more economically, things would not turn out like this. Well, I don't even bother to care. It's none of my business. Please, forgive us, Julie. We have done many bad things to you. We're so sorry for that. Is there any chance for us to make it up for you? We have nowhere to go right now and we don't even have any money to spend. If you could not help us to find a house, could you please transfer us a little money so that we could at least make ends meet? Wow, no, old lady. I'm not the Julie that you used to know. I'm a totally different person now. If you want to have my money, then fine, you'll have it. But I'll give it to you as a loan, and you'll have to pay the interest each day. If you agree to my requirement, then we'll have a deal. What? Old lady? Unbelievable. How could you treat your mother-in-law that way? Stop all your stupid talking, because we're over for now. You're not my mother-in-law anymore. I want to cut ties with all of you. For now, what a pity I have to go to work now. No time to talk. So, bye-bye. No, you could not do that. We'll change. We'll become better people. We'll do anything to gain a little mercy from you. Please save us. Julie! Julie! After that, I immediately blocked Mrs. Emmy's number and didn't reply to any of the messages her family sent me. Mrs. Emmy ended up being evicted from the house that she and Neil had moved into just a couple of days after they moved in and had nowhere else to go. Therefore, they had to live a miserable life under a bridge. She then had to find a trivial job to make a living and gain money to find another place to live. About Neil, he had to work as a waiter with a very low salary. However, 
he still had to pay for his sins. So I filed for an at-fault divorce and gave him all the necessary evidence. He was then completely surprised, but still had to accept the truth that he would have to pay me an amount of alimony each month. Well, their lives are truly miserable, but they deserve it, right? About me, due to hard work and persistence, I could finally earn enough money to buy a much better apartment near my company. And well, I'm happy to get rid of that toxic family forever.